A government research panel is predicting an earthquake off Japan's Pacific coast. They say it's highly likely that a magnitude 8 to 9 tremor will strike in the next 30 years. The Earthquake Research Committee issued revised projections about quakes along the Nankai Trough. The 900-kilometer-long undersea zone is where one tectonic plate descends below another. It runs from central to western Japan. The committee says there's a 20% chance of a quake in the next 10 years. They say that rises to 40 to 50% in the next 20 years, then to 60 to 70% in the next 30 years. According to our research, it's highly likely that a quake of at least magnitude 8 will occur along the Nankai Trough within the next few decades. The chairman of the committee called on authorities to prepare for possible earthquakes and tsunami. But the scientists couldn't make predictions for a quake over magnitude 9. They said that no records exist of such a huge tremor over the past few thousand years. Japan's ruling parties want to create escape roads and other facilities to minimize damage from a projected megaquake. Officials are compiling draft legislation. Seismologists say a megaquake and tsunami could hit the region along the Nankai Trough. The active fault stretches down the Pacific coast from central to western Japan. The area is historically prone to large quakes. The governing Liberal Democratic Party and new Komeito officials are discussing bills to strengthen social infrastructure in the region. The draft bill calls for the central government to establish a basic disaster plan. Municipalities will be asked to create disaster response and evacuation strategies. Under the plan, the central government will cover two-thirds of the cost of infrastructure for things such as roads and stairs for residents to escape tsunami. The government also plans to subsidize the relocation of buildings to higher ground. These include houses and educational and medical facilities. Lawmakers say they hope to submit the bills to the current diet session. Next up, the Weather Channel cancels all upcoming weather-related programming out of respect for tornado victims. Municipal officials in northeastern Japan are hoping some new technology will give people peace of mind. They're using it in communities surrounding the damaged nuclear plant in Fukushima. They believe the device will provide reliable information on the levels of radiation in areas that have been decontaminated. These workers are looking for a danger that cannot be seen or felt until it's too late. They are using a device called a gamma camera it detects the source of radioactivity and then displays it as a visual image. Objects emitting radiation are shown in red. The readings are being taken in Kawauchi village. The village lies within the 30-kilometer evacuation zone set up around the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. In some areas, radiation levels are still too high for people to live. Work to clean up radioactive contamination started in November 2011. Decontamination of residential areas finished in March. Village officials hoped that would encourage former residents to return, but less than half have done so. Radiation fears are still running high. We ask each other if radiation levels in Kawauchi are really safe, but I guess all we can do is believe what the village says. 
To assure residents, reliable information on decontaminated areas is crucial. Usually that data is collected with a Geiger counter. This device measures radiation coming from all directions. It gives a reading for the immediate vicinity, but it cannot tell you where the radiation is coming from. The gamma camera has overcome this shortcoming. The camera only reads radiation coming from the direction it is facing. The camera's field of view is 43 degrees. This means it can measure an area 8 meters high and 8 meters wide from a distance of 10 meters. It usually takes about 20 minutes to produce an image, but if radiation levels are high, the results will appear sooner. The gamma camera can detect the exact source and strength of radiation. It superimposes these data on a video image to clearly show where radioactive materials exist. The deeper the color red, the higher the radiation. Gamma cameras are already used for medical and other purposes, but these devices only function in a tiny range, spotting tumors in the brain, for example. Decontamination workers were looking for a device with a wider spectrum, something that could detect pockets of radiation in the field. This is the sensor module used in the gamma camera introduced in Fukushima. The 5 cm cube assures higher resolution than conventional medical scanners. It is also smaller and lighter, making it more portable. The developer saw a way to use it in Fukushima, but he had to work on a tight deadline. We wanted to make the new gamma camera as quickly as possible. The time constraint was the toughest condition we faced in developing the device. Workers used this camera to check this house after decontamination. They found a number of radiation sources in the backyard and other places. You can see some radioactive materials are left. Radiation levels are higher in the back of the house. The levels will go down even more when the hill is decontaminated. Some spots in the field also need to be cleaned. Now I can tell where radiation sources are because they showed it to me in color. It's great because usually you can't see radiation. I think the gamma camera will be an effective tool to promote the village's decontamination and to convince the residents that the village is safe to return. Kawauchi village plans to use the gamma camera in areas where decontamination work is already finished. The work will continue through November, mainly in residential areas. Village officials will then ask the central government to do further cleanup in places where radiation levels are still high. The battle to decommission the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant is testing the skills and limits of engineers. Now the government and uh, plant operators say they'll help. They're building a replica of the plant's container, container vessels to put engineers and robots through their paces. Radiation levels in the plant are still too high for workers to remove melted nuclear fuel rods. Tokyo Electric Power Company and the government say they'll develop a remotely operated robot to deal with the work. They plan to build a facility in Fukushima Prefecture, about 20 kilometers from the crippled plant. The facility will include a life-size model of the containment vessel. Workers will be trained there to operate the robot. The project is likely to begin operating within two years. Engineers decommissioning Fukushima Daiichi are getting ready to apply a new tool to a growing problem. They're testing a system to decontaminate wastewater that's accumulating at a rate of hundreds of tons a day. They hope to put it into full operation this autumn. Officials with Tokyo Electric Power Company gave the Nuclear Regulation Authority a report on the tests. They said the system is running well. The advanced liquid processing system can remove 62 types of radioactive material. It can treat 250 tons of water a day. TEPCO has three such systems. Engineers have been testing one since late March. Regulators gave TEPCO permission to start testing the other two systems in the middle of next month. About 400 tons of contaminated water accumulates every day. Government officials and TEPCO engineers hope to see all the decontamination systems running at full capacity as soon as possible.
A German politician says a country could end its reliance on nuclear power and create jobs at the same time if it switches to renewable energy. Winfred Kretschmann is the president of the German Bundesrat, or the Federal Council. He told NHK about the decision to shut down all of his country's nuclear reactors by 2022 following the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Kretschmann is currently visiting Japan. He says scrapping nuclear reactors and turning to renewable energy would be an economically sound choice. Analysts have pointed out that shutting down nuclear power plants could push electricity prices up and have a negative impact on the country's economy. Kretschmann disagrees. Nuclear power plants need a huge amount of money to ensure their safety, but renewable energy doesn't need that money. He says the use of renewable energy will create new jobs and help with the country's economic growth. He also says he met with the governor of Fukushima Prefecture, Yuhei Sato. Kretschmann says they discussed possible ways to decommission the reactors at the Fukushima plant, and he offered his cooperation. The Fukushima accident is still a source of grave concern for Japan's neighbors. Thousands of people in Taiwan have rallied to stop the construction of a nuclear plant near the capital, Taipei. About 3,000 protesters took to the streets of central Taipei on Sunday. They shouted that they don't need nuclear plants. I wasn't interested in politics before, but I joined the rally because I want a safer world for my children. The government wants to build Taiwan's fourth nuclear plant in Xinbei City, but residents opposed to the project have increased since the Fukushima meltdowns. President Ma ying administration fears a negative impact on the economy if the plant is scrapped. The government says it will hold a referendum on nuclear power by the end of this year. The latest polls suggest that 70 percent of those surveyed oppose the construction of nuclear plants. Two of Japan's biggest energy companies are in the final stages of talks to jointly build a thermal power plant. Officials at Tokyo Electric Power Company and Chubu Electric Power Company reportedly plan to sell power across the boundary of their service areas. Now that's a rare move for Japanese power companies which are under strict regulations. The 600,000 kilowatt coal-fired power generator would be built in TEPCO's thermal power compound north of Tokyo. Under the deal, TEPCO officials would sell about 70% of the electricity to businesses in the Tokyo metropolitan area. The remaining would be sold by Chubu Electric. Japanese people could be sitting on the answer to their energy problems. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has said he'll encourage development of geothermal power. Abe visited on Saturday the hot spa resort of Beppu in western Japan. He was shown how steam from hot spring water can drive a turbine and generate electricity. An operator said even small energy producers are legally obliged to employ a full-time engineer. He said this cost stops more Japanese people from launching their own geothermal projects. Abe said he would talk to his industry minister about easing regulations. Local industry is key to Japan's vitality. It is essential to make the most of local industries in Japan's growth strategy. Ministers plan to outline their growth strategy in more detail next month. Islamist suicide bombers have attacked two targets in the West African country of Niger. They killed at least 20 people. Militants broke through defenses at an army barracks in the northern city of Agadez. Then they detonated a car packed with explosives. Government officials say at least 19 people were killed. At the same time, another group drove into a mine in the town of Arlit, some 250 kilometers away. They too had loaded their vehicle with bombs. Managers of the French nuclear firm Areva run the facility. They said the militants killed one of their employees and wounded 14 others. An Islamist group based in neighboring Mali claimed responsibility for both attacks. Islamist militants took control of northern Mali last year. Troops from France and several African countries moved in to help the government stop their advance. The insurgents have retaliated with cross-border attacks, including a hostage raid in January at an Algerian gas plant.